Right, there's a lot of talk out there, Mark, as usual. Um, there's a lot this of... one will get even more talking. <laughs> as usual. And jury trial. As yeah. usual. So, so basically, there's a lot of talk about, um, you know, jury trial and uh, trial by jury. And uh, clear it up for us. Um, equity <laughs> substance over form. It makes no difference. People use different names for the same thing. Right, okay. That's it. That's all okay, it is. the end. <laughs> the end. Uh, the, the point being that juries are making a decision. Right. So, so people try and make the difference. You know, trial by jury means that it's also about uh, nullifying the law and that, and they can't do that today. And But we'll go through all of this. Okay. So, yeah. So, uh, I mean, the best thing is... Probably if we start off, I share the screen on Magna Carta. Okay, I appreciate uh, this is Magna Carta 1297, uh, but take my word for it. You can check it against Magna Carta 1215 uh, for the relevant part, which is the jury trial. So if you go down to 29, uh, okay, um, and that there is the same as. Oops, why is this thing not getting bigger? Uh, I think it is. Is that getting bigger? No. Yeah. Uh, whoops. So that uh, is the same as what used to be in Magna Carta 1215, Article 39. Okay. So imprisonment and C means etc. contrary to law, administration of justice. No free man shall be taken or imprisoned or dis be deceased of his freehold, all liberties, all free custom, or be outlawed, or exiled, or any otherwise destroyed, nor will we pass upon him, nor condemn him, but by lawful judgment of his peers, or by the law of the land. We will sell no man, we will, deny, we will not deny or defer to any man either justice or right. Okay, so the first thing I want to clear up is this here, lawful judgment, okay? So there's two ways lawful judgment can be attained. One is uh, his peers, okay? And the other is the law of the land, all right? So we'll start off by looking at that. So essentially, uh, judgment of his peers, in those days, peers meant something different to what it, people are familiar with now as somebody of an equal, okay? Yes, they were equals, but peers in those days are like the equivalent of the House of Lords. They were the advisors of the king and his uh, elite people. They were the peers. Mm. And, and that's what it meant. So, yes, it was judgment of his peers or trial by jury or jury trial, I don't want to call it. However, this year, for a long time, I never understood what this meant. I.e., there's two ways of making a judgment in 1215. And, and it turns out that basically, the, uh, the, the, with the Norman invasion, uh, came this thing called uh, the will of God. Uh, and the will of God, because he's the only one that could really judge us, uh, was it was believed that he'd perform miracles on the innocent to protect them through the various modes of trial by ordeal. So trials by ordeal, I think many people are familiar with the witch hunts and burning on the stake and you know keeping their heads under water, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm. So that's what the law of the land at the time was. If you were just a mere peasant like us, then, uh, you know, your innocence or guilt was determined not by a jury, but by uh, whatever ordeal was in fashion at the time. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Including one of them that I found was that uh, you'd have a hot cauldron and a ring would be dropped into it. And you, if you can dig out the ring, then God's on your side and you're innocent. So that's Ooh. the first thing I really want to put in you. Whoever thought of that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. However, okay, 
uh, Magna Carta 1215 is significant. Okay, it's not current statute law. Magna Carta 1297 is current statute law, and it has carried through the substance of what Magna Carta 1215 was about. Right. So if anybody wants to go and have a look, look at 1297. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, the rest, if you want to know how to share up your, you know, your uh, estate, uh, if you're a baron and if you die, how much does the wife get and how much do the kids get? And, you know, most of it's just totally irrelevant. Um, but the substance and the significant thing of this is it laid the foundation of the rule of law being, and I'm talking about Magna Carta 1215 here, mm -hmm. uh, the, the rule of law really being um, uh, this significant difference that's really changed in Magna Carta 1215, i.e. the king subjected himself to the rule of law by sharing power with the barons who he gave some powers to be a check and a balance against the king's behavior. So extremely significant. Uh, however, the substance uh, is in Magna Carta 1297. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, hopefully that clarifies uh, this uh, issue uh, with trial by jury of your peers because like I say I never understood what did it mean all by law of the land Big, uh, it's a significant difference so that there if we go to the Bill of Rights no, I was going to say uh, no doubt we're uh, going to get a few comments uh, oh, absolutely. Uh, as usual yeah. <laughs> take it or leave it chaps you know what I mean yeah. okay. <laughs> so uh, basically, uh, with this, um, the trial by jury is carried through to the Bill of Rights. Right. So the Bill of Rights is the current uh, uh, authority of those governing. So King Charles is governing and claiming his authority to govern under the Bill of Rights. Now... Uh, there's a few more things that I haven't spoken about before about the Bill of Rights. Traditionally, a constitution, they'd say, sets out the rights of the uh, subjects or the government or the citizens, whatever word you want to use. Again, think of equity as substance over form. Mm. Um, and sets out the relationship, basically, between those governing and the governed. Now, this here is the full title of it. The Bill of Rights 6088 is the short title. So if you just read Bill of Rights, uh, it doesn't sound like it's a, it's a significant document. Mm. However, you read an act declaring the rights and liberties of the subjects. Okay. This is clearly setting out the relationship between the rights and liberties which those governing will uphold for the subjects, and in addition, basically settling the secession of the crown. Again, equity is substance over form. If somebody is uh, claiming authority to govern under this, which is where their legal authority comes from, um, then uh, I really don't care who it is. It could be anybody off the street, so long as they do their job properly in accordance with what they said they'll do. Okay, the next thing is this year. The heads of Declaration of the Lord and Commons recited. Now, when you look here, okay, it goes on to say, where's the late King James II by the assistance of diverse evil counselors, judges, and ministers employed by him, i.e. those governing, did endeavor to subvert and uh, extirpate the Protestant religion at the time, there was, uh, again, the Catholics and Protestants and other uh, religions. So there was a lot of religious strife at the time. However, subvert and extirpate not only the Protestant religion and the laws and liberties of this kingdom. So this here is a list of the laws which were broken. Okay, so this here is 
part of the common law as it stood in 1688. And down the bottom, okay, uh, we've got juries. So the, the, what the king was doing at the time was he was basically loading the jury in his favor. Okay. Uh, and that was what he was breaking the law about. The jury was meant to be impartial, but he manipulated it. Yeah. Okay. Surprise. Yeah, what a surprise there. <laughs> um, what he also was doing, which was against the law, okay, uh, was charge excessive bail committed in criminal causes to elude the benefit of the laws made for the liberty of the subjects. These laws were in place. Also, excessive fines had been imposed. All right. Excessive bail is specific for the uh, uh, criminal side. Also, illegal and cruel punishments were inflicted, i.e. they weren't allowed, because these are laws that the king had broken. And several grants and promises made for fines and forfeitures before any conviction. Okay. And then it continues to say, or judgment against the person upon whom the same were to be levied. Okay. So the law at the time was fines and forfeitures were being, uh, being made before conviction or before judgment of the person. This was the state of the law, i.e. It's not only criminal matters. It's also when the state wants to steal your money. And it goes on to confirm. It's just just going to add, Mark, is that word persons. <laughs> yeah, well, you see, it's, it's, it goes back long before 1889. <laughs> All of which were utterly directly contrary to the known laws and statutes and freedoms of this realm. Remember, the Bill of Rights says they must uphold all the premises. These are the laws specifically yeah. mentioned here. Yeah. Okay. So just remember this before conviction or judgment, because people are questioning uh, the PCNs and stuff like that. And there's a judgment flying around where, where one of the, where the justice obviously hasn't read or understood the Bill of Rights. But Thanks to uh, Lord Sumption for this little booklet, okay? Because when I read that, this made sense now. We'll show that at the end, Mark, when we yeah. share the screen. Okay. Yeah. So when we scroll down, so basically what they were saying is, we also declare this stuff, right? The, yeah. the 13 uh, oh, articles, all right? Mm -hmm. Of which... Jurors ought to be duly impaneled and returned. And we'll be looking at this because it's extremely important to understand this in the context of the history of what went on at the time. This is 1688, and we'll be talking about what happened in 1670, specifically regarding uh, trial by jury or jury trial, whatever you want to call it, and it makes no difference. Yeah. Okay. So at the time, Okay, here it says only for conviction. So what they're saying is, oh no, Article uh, 12 says it's only for conviction. Okay. However, what it's saying is, we've looked above just now, it wasn't conviction, it was conviction or judgment is the law. And this here is declaring there is no way that you do anything uh, without conviction specifically that had a problem with criminal side okay so it's not that they can't um uh, uh sorry that the bill of rights says it's only for criminal matters jury trial is for both criminal and civil right okay okay mm. um and then uh basically that was 1688 but what was significant and more or less ended all the trial by combat, okay, uh, uh, was that all was coming to an end 
and Bushel's case. Now, people will be familiar with Penn and Mead. So Penn and Mead uh, were the, uh, let me just pull this up so that people can see this here. Uh, Penn and Mead were the uh, chaps that were uh, done for uh, preaching. And uh, with that, whoops, why does Bushels come up? Case of William Penn and Mead. I've got a picture of it. Um, one second. Okay. Um, where's the share of the screen? Okay, so it was all about the jury, okay, about this pluck, right? So the case was William Penn and William Mead were tried on six, in 1670 for preaching to an unlawful assembly, right? That was what the charge was. However, the jurors said, uh, the jurors did not return the verdict, which the judge and the mayor at the time wanted. <laughs> and so uh, basically uh, they were sent down, locked up without food for two nights and were fined for their final verdict of not guilty. Right. So they were asked to return their verdict uh, against the charge. Okay. And the charge was preaching illegally or unlawfully and thereby breaching the peace. And they said, um, uh, all that he was do they were doing was speaking in the street. <laughs> and they wanted uh, the verdict of preaching. And they just said, no, he's guilty of speaking in the streets. Mm. Okay. So uh, basically, um, as a result, uh, Bushel was uh, convicted. No, they were fine, and they appealed the case. All right. So basically, as a result of not uh, returning the verdict that the judge wanted and that the uh, prosecution, the mayor wanted, um, they were held in uh, contempt of the the order, and they were fine. Um, however. When they appealed it, they won uh, the appeal, okay, and in contempt of the said Lord, the King, and his law, to the great disturbance of his peace, to the great terror and disturbance of many of his liege people and subjects, to the ill example of all others in like case offenders, and against the peace of the said Lord King, his crown and dignity uh, was turned over. And what they uh, did was they had again the paperwork nonsense that we still face today as litigants in person trying to put in paperwork. This is just ridiculous when you read this stuff. Uh, you had to go and get a lawyer to fill in a habeas corpus. Now, uh, uh, they forced their way through with, and got the habeas corpus and uh, started putting an end to this nonsense or at least opening it up. However, what is significant about this is uh, that jurors could not be punished on the account of their verdict unless there was evidence to show that they'd acted uh, improperly. And... Uh, in the Penn and Mead case, Bushel and them, they went according to their conscience. They felt nothing was done wrong. No harm was caused. No breach of the peace, which is what the charge was. Mm. And therefore, it was basically established the principle of the power of the jury. And that was that you follow your conscience and that's how your creator speaks to you about what's right and wrong. And that's irrespective of any other opinions, including the laws expressed by the judge or anybody else. A jury has the power to vote with their conscience as to what is right or wrong. 
So it's not actually jury nullification. What they're doing is, if there's no harm, no victim, therefore no crime, therefore they've done no wrong. And your conscience is, that's what you are judging. Was it a right or a wrong? It doesn't matter what the charge or the legislation says. No. You are voting on your conscience against right and wrong because there is only right and wrong. Um, and that there really uh, is where what we would call the battle of, you know, trial by jury versus jury trial. It's the same thing. Because you don't need to listen to the law. You need to listen to your conscience. And then if you're, if everybody's conscience is saying, okay, there's no harm, therefore I'm returning a not guilty verdict, they'll very quickly get the idea that, hey, they're not doing what we tell them. Okay? Um, and therefore, uh, the appeal uh, that this return, charging the prisoners to have acquitted Penn and Mead against full and manifest evidence, first and next, without saying that they did know and believe that evidence to be full and manifest against the indicted person is no cause of fine or imprisonment. So that really uh, is what jury nullification or what people are talking about jury nullification and the significance of the trial by jury or jury trial, same thing. And um, it's still a power which exists today and uh, so people that are relying or, you know, really push Magna Carta 1215, we've got the tools in, in Magna Carta 12, 12, 1297, which is current statute law. We've got it in the Bill of Rights, which is current statute law. And it's for both criminal uh, charges as well as the state bringing civil charges against you which is no different what they're doing with council tax, et cetera. So uh, uh, I'll try and get hold of the judgment what people are talking about, where they found that, where the judges have looked about at the Bill of Rights and have said, no, that's only for criminal and therefore you can't have a jury for um, uh, PCNs and stuff like that. Uh, we've got to look at the reasoning behind that and if that reasoning is an error of law, which it appears to be from uh, what other people have been saying, the law stood at the time that it's criminal as well as uh, civil. When, yeah. when the state is prosecuting the people. Mm. Okay. So really, um, hopefully, uh, you know, people see that really... There's no difference uh, in substance between the tools we have available to us today. Uh, and also, hopefully, people understand the significance of Magna Carta 1215 isn't Article 61. It's the fact that the king subjected himself to a power sharing agreement, right. i.e., to the rule of law. Okay. Okay. Just, just show us that uh, that book uh, for everyone. Have a look oh, at. yeah. Right. So uh, rather expensive little book. Okay. The reason I bought it was it said Introduction by Jonathan Sumption. Okay. The Bill of Rights. Yeah. Uh, I didn't realize it was such a small book. It's a brilliant idea. Actually, it's a pocket book. I'm not selling them for Lord Sumption. Okay. Uh, you, can, you can keep it in your pocket. He's got a very good introduction, which is half the book. Okay. Uh, and then the other half is the Bill of Rights. Right. He hasn't put this out for nothing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's 15 or 16 quid. It's a bit steep, but um, it's I think it's uh, second hand. About it. I think it's second hand on eBay for about seven quid. Yeah. It What's might it? be anyway. Um, and the, the only other thing is um, we'll put a link in the description. Do, do you want to just do a quick screen share of that PDF? Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, and then, and you don't have to go through it, but just show people that they can they can click the link, 
and go to this PDF where uh, okay, hold on a sec. Got an understanding uh, let me just pull the other screen up. Let's see which website and which bloody thing do I have this all on. Uh is it this one? Yeah. Okay, so on the website, I'm going to get rid of these lines. Uh, okay, there is under the more tab, common law of the land and case law and legislation. If you click on that, uh, oh, I'm on the page already. Okay, so here I'm starting to put a uh, case law with links, good historical books with links, Blackstone's Comrades. Uh, these, this website's a very good site if you want old things. So you can find Magna Carta 1215 on there. Um, then there's different uh, places to download legislation around the world and Australia, Canada, and New Zealand, basically have got the same stuff as England. You just got to find it there, it's slightly different. Then there's sources for free online uh judgments so that's bailey world lli uh uk supreme court and the national archives who now are starting to update and get their stuff up to date but they only start from 20, 2003 um and then here basically i'm putting them in little blocks so this is r versus felix though which people uh, should read in regards council tax and then here's the analysis, which I've basically got. Okay. And so that there goes through more or less what we've done. And then down at the bottom, the links where you can uh, download them. Okay. Or you can just download them from. So these here are the cases. I've highlighted a few interesting bits. A lot of stuff here really needs a bit more time to go through it. And you can directly download them from here, Bushel's case or pen and meat. Right. Blimey. Okay. And and as I get more time, I'll be uploading more and more stuff. Yeah, yeah, sure. Sure. Excellent. All good. Okay.